I guess we don't have to sync up any video or anything. I don't suppose we do. All right. Well, somebody requested, I think, we did a, do a podcast or something, and I have no idea what that entails, so... No idea what we should even call it. Um, I think Rhett's to talk. Rhett's cast? Rhett's... No, Rhett's Rhett, talk. Rhett's talk, yeah. Rhett's talk. Rhett's talk. We can even have guests later, if we wanted. Rhett's talk about the title of our podcast. Okay, well, we should do that. Okay. Maybe at some point. Maybe we should have done that offline. That'll be the out. first hour segment of this, actually, <laughs> where we I get I can I can squeeze an hour out of that. I think we could too. I have a lot of puns in me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's better than other things. That's uh, well, that's uh that's for the second episode. Speaking of a lot of shit in you, have you seen Prometheus? I have actually. I saw it uh, <laughs> me, about a week ago. Me too. I saw it um opening night, uh midnight the day before kind of deal. You know okay. how that works. So you cosplayed? I cosplayed. Yeah. As what yeah. the uh, the headless robot thing? No, as um as uh Wayland. Wayland. Actually, no, as Utani, the um the other guy who formed the Wayland Utani Corporation from mm-hmm. the Alien series. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Oh, should we mention there's probably going to be Prometheus spoilers in this podcast? Oh, I suppose so. Okay, spoiler: this movie's horrible. Spoilers: it's not very good. You know, no, I'm I'm saying that for comedic will... effect. I I I my impression was honestly good, not great. Yeah, I'm kind of the same way. Like, I left feeling good about it, like, about the experience, like, it was worth the admission price, but it fell well below the expectation of, expectations I had coming in, because you saw the trailer, right? Or, oh, I, the think, trailer. I think you showed me the trailer, actually. I did. My favorite, my, my M was like, was like, hey, here's the trailer for Prometheus, and your response was like, oh my god, I have to see this. Yeah, this, like, looks really fucking good. Oh, yeah, no, but, it was, like, jaw-dropping good. And but plus, then, like, uh, yeah, I mean, but, and you had, like, it had so much potential, you had Ridley Scott coming back, and... All that, Damon all Lindelof, this... he wrote Lost. Well, I don't know if that's a positive or a negative, but... Well, no. Alright, Lost had good writing, but... Right. Well, yeah. I can go on and on about Lost. We'll save that for Chapter 2. But, um... Look, all no. I'm saying is that Prometheus gave me a great idea for an Olympic sport called the Post-Op 500-Yard Dash. <laughs> You know, well, you know, it's funny because I felt like Prometheus had the same problems as Lost. Is they started asking a lot of, bi- started like mm. asking a lot of big questions and starting up a lot of big plot points and then not answering any of them in any meaningful way. But supposedly, this is like the setup to some sort of trilogy or no? That's bullshit. Series? Oh, really? No, well, like even know, after the way the movie ended. Even if it is, like none of the character motivations made a whole lot of sense. I still don't know why David did any of what he did, the robot, you know? Yeah, he was like, I I heard someone say this, he was like a a curious Dennis the Menace. (laughs) That's pretty good, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. No, it's it's perfect, like, his whole character motivation made no fucking sense. Because, like, if you look at Alien, right, like, that Mm -hmm. that robot, the android Ash... Yeah, there was like, a clear reason for him to do what he did. Absolutely. And Bishop? Bishop is sort of acting under his own volition, but at least kind of makes sense. Yeah, but this guy, he just kind of felt like being a dick. Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, so he's just like, I'm going to infect this guy, because, yeah, why not? Mm-hmm. And then, pff, oops, got you pregnant. <laughs> well, by and was that, was that, like, part of his whole plan? Like, you know, I bet they're going to fuck tonight. But I don't think it was, because okay. his whole thing was, um, he was, Waylon put him on the ship, right? David, the closest thing you had to his son, he was like his daughter. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, okay, well, I just, all I want to do is ask God, aka these aliens, if they'll extend my life. Mm. And, uh, but meanwhile, I'm also going to put this robot on the ship just to fuck with everyone, because I'm silly. <laughs> Wait, I mean, it didn't make sense. And, and, and yeah. they had no way of knowing even that they were like hostile life forms or things that could be exploited for bioweaponry on that planet, right? And that's another thing. Like, they do cutesy talk to the evil cobra things. <laughs> well, that, that... Who's a cute little evil snake creature? Oh, no. oh my god, it's attacking me. Why? <laughs> Someone pointed out, too, that biologist, right? So, when they first encounter the dead engineer, you know, the headless one, yeah. And keep in mind, this guy's a fucking biologist. He should be right up his alley, like, oh my god, a species we've never seen before. And he's like, fuck this, I'm out of here, I'm going back to the ship, are you with me, geologist guy? <laughs> and then they get lost, and it's like this innocuous dead body. But then later in the movie, there's this obviously threatening fucking cobra thing. 
You know, Obviously he's like, threatening. Yeah, it's like it's like hissing at him and shit and rearing up like a cobra would. And he's like, oh, no, it's okay. Come here, little guy. Yeah, let's uh, reach out to it. I think we can yeah. talk our way through this. Suddenly, I'm not a pussy anymore. It's all I'm good. totally courageous to you. Like, it made no sense. Oh, I'm dead. Well, well that's the thing. Yeah. And then, like, you know, it turns out Meredith is um, Waylon's daughter. Who cares? Yeah, kind of like a plot twist that just <laughs> kind of like set up to be this like <gasps> moment, and then you're just like, oh, all right. It's like it's like the sixth sense would be like Bruce Willis is actually a ghost and also Jewish, and you're like, eh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know the point of that, but okay. Shocking. <laughs> I know it's ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I I just I don't I didn't care about Meredith as. Anything. I just and didn't care about her. Why didn't Charlize Theron think to move to the side when the ship was crashing on them? <sighs> or just to jump laterally? <laughs> well, I mean, none of it made sense. <laughs> I mean, they all died for really stupid reasons. Basically. My favorite being the captain and those two other guys. Remember? <laughs> they had this, like, spring break moment at the end. <laughs> all right, woo! Hands in the air! But, like, the, 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 our, our scientist friend runs out, and she's like, Hey, this ship taken off! It's gonna destroy Earth! Could you just trust me on this and, like, sacrifice yourself and blow yourself up into the other ship? Yeah, we're with you, Captain. I feel pretty good yeah, about okay. it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, I trust her. Yeah, she's that's, normal. That's pretty good. Yeah. She's the one who was freaking out, right? And just, uh, just underwent severe blood loss and I surgery. Mean, to be fair, the Captain is the guy from Luther, and that's a pretty great series. So I would <laughs> want to stick with him as well. <laughs> um... I will admit too, I didn't. I didn't mind so much her running after surgery because she had these like syringes full of drugs, and the well, the surgery seems like the best scene in the movie. I think probably. You think so? I think so. I. Yeah. I mean, I'm kind of willing to forgive a lot about the surgery thing. Like the surgery segment was cool and everything, but I mean, she had some pretty intense athleticism after that for the rest of the movie. Like, <laughs> you know, she was that's... jumping over enormous, several foot long okay, gaps in true. the planet that we're forming. <laughs> Alright, and to be fair, um, it is sort of ridiculous that in the next scene they gave her like a token, like, ow, my stomach hurts, but it doesn't affect anything on kind of <laughs> deal. I'll, I'll grant that was pretty dumb. Man, I've got a tummy ache. <laughs> no, that, yeah, that was, that was pretty weird. And also, like, I mean, you have this futuristic automatic surgery pod, so we'll forget the anesthesia thing just for drama's sake, but staples, really. <laughs> but you can't just... It? Wasn't the pod designed for um, men, even though it was in Charlie's Theron's cabin? And it's like one of 12 made, but you can't switch the gender automatically. <laughs> it's like, hey, it's not that far in the future. Man, this is only designed for prostate exams. What the hell? <laughs> Space flight, sure, but a unisex surgery pod? Come on. Why is it telling me to turn my head and cough? <laughs> what are we, God? No, those guys are. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> yeah... Yeah. Um, I didn't get why that had, they had to die. Uh, I didn't get why, like, anyone did. I, I, I thought those two characters in the cockpit who were betting were completely useless. They had, that was their, well, that, that, the betting thing was their whole arc in the entire movie. That was <laughs> the think, only thing that distinguished them at all. I hey, remember we, that bet? Yeah. It, better <laughs> pay up. Oh, let's die. <laughs> I think we, we came up with, like, better dialogue for them. Like, uh, <laughs> like, hey, you still gonna pay up? I'm sorry, who are you again? <laughs> What are we doing here, exactly? This is really our only plot point. Damon, did you leave out some pages for us? No? Oh. <laughs> I started this with, like, ah, hey, good, but not great. Now we're just trashing it. <laughs> no, we're just, it's <laughs> shit. <laughs> That's awful. Fucking garbage, That's Ridley Scott. Stupid. More like Ridley the flying gargoyle thing directed it. <laughs> like, Ridley shot his loathing alien. Uh -oh. <laughs> and Blade Runner and all those other movies. Um, He's never made a good movie. <laughs> Your shit, Scott. Um, his, his whole career's over. <laughs> is what the internet's probably saying. Well, basically, basically. I don't know. I mean, I you know, not to get on a lost tangent, I, I was kind of unhappy with the way Lost went too, and I felt that it sort of paralleled in that, like. Yeah, I kind of was too. Uh, I mean, so, it, it, were, it were you like... were you one who did you watch Lost as it was airing, or did you no. kind of binge on it? Okay, so you're like me. You kind of. I've been watched it, it all at once. Yeah, me too. I, me too. I managed to catch up to season six just before it started. Okay, basically. yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right. I remember that now. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. was the exact same way. Yeah, no, I was. Yeah, I was basically I was programming police knots, and then like in between, while I was waiting for shit. I'd watch like Lost, mm -hmm. and um, I 
okay, I really like the writing, I really like the characters, I just really do not buy that they had any of it planned. I think that was just a total sham. What I heard is that they had, like, the first and last shot planned, but they mm-hmm. didn't really have, like, what A to B entailed exactly. So they knew it would, hey, lost spoilers, guys, that it would open with Jack opening his eyes and end with Jack kind of closing his eyes. Well, you know, that's... Which is uh, um, reasonable, but... Mm. I'll, I'll show you, like, man, one of my big disappointing things, and it, it is, I will admit, like, a pretty silly tertiary plot point, but I, th- I think it kind of illustrates the whole problem, is the polar bear thing. Which, in season one of Lost, if you haven't watched the show, you see a polar bear runs out, and you're like, what the fuck is a polar bear doing on a tropical island? And this one character is reading a comic book with a polar bear in it, so you're thinking, like, well, is that why it happens? Is it, like, a fantastical thing? And the answer is just completely tautological insofar as they just say, like, hey, you know what? Like, um, there's this research group, and they're experimenting on polar bears on the island, and one got loose. And why are they experimenting on polar bears? There's no reason. Yeah, but actually, if you do some behind-the-scenes research, you find out that the whole polar bear thing is just a Diet Coke product placement. <laughs> it might as well. Like, I would have accepted. I would have accepted that answer better because, like, one of the Dharma scientists even says something like, "Oh, I'll put you with those ridiculous polar bear experiments." Like, even he's admitting, like, "Yeah, it's really stupid for us to have that." <laughs> I mean, and that's. I mean, it, it's it's just completely unsatisfying. And mm. six six years into Lost, you'd think they kind of. Would it help you? It, it annoys me, too, because I feel like the contention from the producers the whole time, too, was like, hey, we're building up to something. We have this room. We all talk out all the plot points. Everything is is planned out in there. And then season six, they're like, hey, you know, we're not going to actually answer these things. I'm sorry. Like, oh, the show's ending in two episodes. <laughs> we, better, we better wrap this up and figure it out. Yeah. Mm. Nah. So Enter- I don't know. Entertaining show, though. No, definitely. And that's what I think was really disappointing about it is, like, it like the characters were really f- good. I really like Jack. I like I like Sawyer a lot. Um, well, t- obviously. No, Ben. Can I use it? My favorite thing about Lost is my whole life because my last name is Sawyer. Mm. I even recently got the, I I keep getting that fucking Tom joke my whole life. <laughs> and Sawyer from Lost when he came around finally like, like I'm like oh my name's Sawyer like oh from Lost I'm like thank you yes something it, it entirely turned your life around somehow. <laughs> I actually, I, w- I went to a doctor recently, and, um, you know, he was like, uh, oh, your name's Sawyer, huh? I'm like, yeah, he goes, you're related to Tom? And I actually said to him, like, really? I mean, not to be, like, obnoxious, to some, but I'm just, I've heard it my whole fucking life. But and he was like, no. well, you have cancer. And he's like, no, my, my neighbor's name is Tom. It's like, well, yes, yes, I am related to him. It's not a common at all name. Could you his ask? neighbor's name is Tom Sawyer? Yes, apparently. Oh. This is his cover-up. And yes, I do have cancer, by the way, but. Mm, well. Mm-hmm. And this is the platform you chose to bring that up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> podcast episode Look, we need to start two. a podcast and talk about some real shit. <laughs> it's like form spring, but more real. I can't Raw. afford a therapist, so... <laughs> Diabetes, get in here. <laughs> oh, I think we can afford it. <laughs> Link. Uh, yeah. What? what? No, just... So that's part one. Is that part one? <laughs> I don't real, think so. Did we structure this at all? Or, uh... I don't know. Do you want to, do you want to keep talking for another ten minutes? <laughs> well, uh, what else did we have in the pipe? We had uh, Lost, Prometheus, Your, your Cancer. Um... Pax? My Pax. Name. Pax. We did both go to Pax East. That was a lot Some of uh, hot two-month-old news that we're bringing up now. <laughs> I really liked Pax a lot. I did, too. It was a fun time. I've never been to, like, any sort of nerd conference before. I'd been to PAX Prime in Seattle and then PAX East of this year. I wanted to go to PAX Prime this year, but with, like, the wedding and everything, I just was like, I can't swing it. The wedding? Whoa, all sorts of breaking (laughs) news. I'm getting married in October, yeah. So. Uh, I think I have to go to that too. Yeah, I, I, I some I have invited you for some reason. Yeah. So you'll be with like a couple hundred people from New Jersey you don't know. I'm actually uploading your save the date invitation to Etsy Pro. <laughs> Please do. It's got the address, the date. Please just fill, bring Proteus and uh, and just comment over the whole thing. You're just gonna be like, we should have brought a bigger church. <laughs> At any rate, though, um, yeah, I'm having a goon table. No, um. <laughs> Uh, Davo's giving you away, right? I, I would hope so. Yeah. Giving me away, yes. Yes, giving you away. That's, that's, <laughs> that, that's the thing that happens in weddings. Right. <laughs> weddings. No, but um, uh, I wanted to go to PAX Prime this year because um, I, I, I had a good time. 
Um, yep. And I mentioned this on Twitter, but uh, I, I also met the king of all nerds there. Oh, was is... this the uh, the police nuts cosplayer? No, 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 no. I was I was okay with it. It was the guy who I was like talking to that woman, and I'm like, she worked oh. there. And... <laughs> I'm like, my first conference, and she, he just jumps in and like, I have been to several anime conferences, it was my first pack, and I cosplay as Fire Luigi from Super Mario 1, you know. Yeah, that's the thing we talked about when we were uh, kind of walking down the streets of Boston afterwards getting lost, was that it's, like, going into PAX is like going into this just entirely different bubble universe. Yeah, it's Where very... just all sorts of rules are turned upside their heads, and it's just okay to, to be the... I don't know. It's... I'm I'm really not gonna. I'm not really not trying to act like Johnny Coolboy or something. But it was so awkward when you first walk in, mm-hmm. and then you kind of get used to it, and it's like whatever, you know. Well, yeah, you get like a huge sense of sensory overload when you first come in. You see all this cosplay. You, you hear right. things. There's just all kinds of. There's these retro game rooms. You have a big erection. Somewhat unhygienic people every now and then. <laughs> That's why you have the erection. Yeah, and then no, you just it's yeah. Have to jerk off in the elevator it's awkward. well yeah, yeah. And then... remember we had that race anyway um <laughs> no um i think i think runaway guys panel was my highlight though that made the whole cost of admission worth it no yeah definitely it. it was fun to it was fun to to scream at proton john too yes well actually no people weren't aware too we we actually had met him um the day before and it was, uh, we had known Proton John from back in the day. Oh yeah, like, like back in the day, back like, when Let's Play was a fledgling baby. <laughs> in Aught 7, as I call it. Yes. Right, and, um, we, uh, we played Anticipation with him in the classic controller's room there. Yeah, yeah. I think I won. Did I win? I think I was in the lead at the time, or maybe we were Oh no, to no. Tide. I'm sorry, you won. You did win. I'm sorry, I just, I totally tried to steal that from you. I totally rewrote that Don't experience. take away my PAX accomplishment from me. <laughs> I do that to all my memories. And, and then I graduated valedictorian. But, um... I have the achievement to prove it. <laughs> but yeah, John, John was a very... I mean, even before the panel, he was extremely tired and stressed about the whole thing. And He, he had a rough time at that PAX. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't. I mean... I, you know what it is? It's one of those things where, as a third party, you could, you know, you can totally see it for what it was and say, like, holy shit, that many people showed up just to see you and your two little friends there. And, and also, uh, wow, holy shit, what a train wreck this is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, in general, like, everybody had a good time. It wasn't like, oh my god, this is the worst thing I've ever seen yeah. and I should, you know, he should I mean, be there was never, there was, I mean, you know, it was kind of horrendous as the panel went, there was never any sort of heckling. I mean, it was just all supportive all the way from the crowd. I mean, to be fair, I did run up and give him the finger, but... You did do that, yeah. I did do I mean, there was, there was some heckling, yeah. just not... Mm-hmm. Um, no, but I mean, like, it's one of those things that, um... And not that it's the same thing at all, but, like, I, you know, like, I, I don't know if you've ever given a presentation or anything like that in front of a room full of people, that kind of thing. Oh, sure. And it's like, if something goes wrong to you, it's like the worst thing in the world... Uh, like you know? Time slows down. Yeah, basically. Like I was giving this business presentation, and uh, I was using Google PowerPoint or Google Presentations, you know, instead of mm-hmm. the regular PowerPoint. And I pressed the wrong button on the mouse, and it went back to slide one from like eighteen. Mm-hmm. And it was no big deal. And I made a joke, and I kind of recovered and went to slide eighteen. But the time when I'm actually there, I'm like, oh my god, like I'm gonna get fired. This is the worst. Thing. I mean, I don't really think that, but you know what I mean. It's like yeah, yeah, yeah. it feels horrible, even though it's not a big deal. And so John's in front of like um how many people would you say was there? Like I would say like about seven, eight hundred maybe? Yeah. Like eight hundred people and all of a sudden you plan out this whole fucking game event and fucking task manager comes up and the game <laughs> won't come back up. Like you must feel like shit. Oh yeah, I mean we're sitting in the audience laughing our asses off. Oh yeah. No, tweeting I mean, about it. <laughs> it was the funniest fucking thing in the it world was pretty if you're great. not <laughs> It was the king of all shot and Freud moments. Oh yes. No, but, um, so yeah, no, and that's like, you know, I genuinely felt bad for him in a way, because he is a nice guy. Mm-hmm. I mean, his last plays are terrible, but, you know, he's not, <laughs> no, no. kidding, but, uh, <laughs> no, I don't know. I mean, um, all in all, I mean, that was the highlight of it, you know, mm-hmm. and, um, I would, I definitely want to go back next year. Mm-hmm. My, my fiance so wants to go, but I don't think she'd like it, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Well, your girlfriend, uh, I think, would be more into it, right? Yeah, we. Uh, I told her a little bit about 
Pax, and she's uh, done some dress up stuff. See, this is the podcast where we tell all of our female friends, all one of fan, uh, fans, all one of them, you know. Yeah, yeah Sorry, yeah. we're not available. But, um... I, I can't get the girl I'm dating into Red Supreme, so she doesn't... <laughs> but you can't? Well, no, I, I, I explained, like, the basic idea of it to her. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't think she entirely, like, got what it entailed exactly. Well, you're still relatively new in the relationship, right? Yeah, that's correct. Like, yeah. like two I, two weeks. I forget exactly. Like, I'm going to regret that. recording this podcast when we inevitably part ways. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, yeah, no. I, uh, uh... I, I don't remember exactly how I brought it up to my fiance, but um, and I kind of. By the way, I'm so sorry. I feel like the term fiance is so fucking pretentious, but there's just another, you know. It is a little bit. You're kind of a dick right now. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, my Jesus. future wife. Thank you. Now I'm a little more Tommy wise now. Um, no, I, I don't remember how I brought it up, but like she doesn't play video games or care about that at all. But mm-hmm. like she's she likes Billy MC. She mm-hmm. genuinely does and watches. She like watched one of those videos on her own. Like, I came home one day, and she's like, "Hun, I just watched fucking double, uh, Family Feud, and it was hilarious. <laughs> the Family Feud video was pretty great. Billy MC is breaking up my marriage, is what I'm getting at. Mm-hmm. Before it even begins. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She's gonna leave you for Billy MC. How would you feel about that? <laughs> I'm pretty good. <laughs> for... <laughs> if anyone. Well, if it was I would like, understand. If it was, like, Chugga Conroy, I'd be really pissed, but... <laughs> So that's oh. part two. I, I have a, I have another topic for part three. Okay, let's get into it. All right. got... I want to talk about deceased crab. <laughs> okay. okay. It's been burning a hole in your soul for the past, <laughs> what, four years? You know what, though? It kind of has. Okay. I'll be, I'll be frank with you. All right, let's um, dish. Okay. Well, um, if you're talking about... I guess we have to get delved in a little bit into the whole history of the Let's Play kind uh. of thing. Well, I'll bring up Encyclopedia Dramatics. <laughs> well, you might as well. Um, uh, deceased, no, um, deceased Crab is one of the uh, progenitors of Let's Play, along with like myself, Proton John, you, I guess. Uh, Early adopter, I think, is the better word. That's a better word, yeah, thank you. Um, and uh, he started out with La Mulana. Did you ever watch that? I did not. So it's a, fl- it's a flawed gem. I guess I'd put it. I think it's. I think it was actually a pretty good let's play. He made like he made some things you'd now consider mistakes. Where like, Lamulon is a very annoying game to play. It was and, like one of the first indie games, quote unquote, right? Yeah. So it was made by these three Japanese guys who really liked the MSX, and they made this like super hard game with like bad game design choices on purpose. And like as an example, um, there's an item in the game that freezes time. And you need to use it to, like, jump on a platform that's falling, you know, to make it up to a higher platform. You can probably imagine that mm-hmm. sort of scenario. Oh, but, I can. But the item pauses time for a minute 40, real time, hmm. and you can't turn it off or anything. So if you miss the right timing on it, you really just got to sit there. And that's what happened with the Let's Play? Yeah, uh, twice. Oh, twice. Now, the thing is, the game was annoying enough, and Crab wasn't very, like, obnoxious or anything, so... Um, like, it's like one of those things, like, looking back on it now, you're like, eh, we should cut out that minute 40 both times, or, you know. That's what you've been thinking about for the past four years? (laughs) Well, no, no, no. Why didn't you cut that? No, 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 I mean, my... Fucker! (laughs) That bastard calls I'll find a way to ban you, just you wait. Just make a post, I dare you. (laughs) Well, anyway, um... I don't remember the point of that story. But anyway, I liked a lot more on Let's... No, I liked, I liked the Let's Play a lot, even with things like that in there. And I actually watched it twice, all the way through. Twice? Wow. Well, La Mulana looked like a really cool game, but one that I would not want to play myself. Okay, yeah, so yeah, yeah. To that, I see what you mean. To that end, I think it was a perfect choice. Um, kind of like a Deadly Premonition, I think, falls in that category as well. Mm-hmm. I think things started to go bad for Crab around uh, Proteus. Um, not, not... The person not, or the game? The game. Well... If you, there is a Gradius, uh... You missed clone. a prime internet drama opportunity, my friend. <laughs> oh, yeah, right? Thousands of people unsubscribe from this podcast that no one's listening to. <laughs> Basically. But, um, so what happens is, uh, Deceased Crab, um, makes this Let's Play of... I think the game was Jikyu Oshiburi Proteus, I forget, some Japanese... Whatever, it was one of the Proteus series for Super Nintendo. <laughs> oh, yes, that game. <laughs> no, that Everyone will remember that one. <laughs> <laughs> right after Super Mario World, that's the one you... Do you remember where you were when whatever the game you just said was Let's Play? 
It's the Let's Play 9-11, for sure. <laughs> Everyone remembers it. We were already at a September 11th joke on podcast episode 3. Hey, I held out for 25 minutes. <laughs> I think now we have to charge 99 cents for this podcast. Well, there's the explicit rating thrown on there. There goes our viewership. <laughs> um, uh, where was I? Oh, no, so what he did was he did a thing where he um, he picked different Let's Players to play different characters from the game. And as an example, I, I played as, I, I helped him out with his Let's Play, and I did Koitsu, who was a stick figure on a paper airplane type of thing. I kind of remember that, yeah. Yeah, and I had people guess with me, because you get multiple Koitsus on the same airplane, da-da-da-da. So, um, well, what happened was, though, that when you try to coordinate all these different people on the internet, Crab had an update schedule. And we, my, myself especially, couldn't stick to it, you know? Sure. So he kind of, I think he took the wrong th- lesson away from that, because after the Let's Play, um, he came out with another group kind of Let's Play of Knit Stories, and this time he only hit hand-selected people for the threat. Uh-huh. And the shitty thing about something like that is you have, like, a message board format, because on something off the Let's Play, it's a message board, so everyone can post whatever, you know? Right, and if people like your let's play or like the game, they want to contribute things too. And Crab was like explicitly telling them not to. And this all culminated in this guy Captain Duck, who made his own knit story level and wanted to let's play it. And Crab wouldn't let him, but then Captain Duck decided to just post it anyway. To which Crab just kind of posted this big. Uh, I mean, it's um, kind of a legendary post. It is, yeah. It was, remove the video links. It's like, like get, get your thread hijacked the fuck out of here, period now, or something like that, period now, or something like that. Yeah, and he's like, you want to know the truth about your Let's Play, I'll, or your levels? I'll tell you the truth. They're amateurish knit story levels. They don't even <laughs> look anything professional. And he totally dissed this guy's, like, user-edited levels of this stupid little, like, freeware game. No offense to knit stories, but, you know, like... <laughs> Who get, it's like saying, like, your Super Meat Boy levels aren't fair at all. Like, who fucking cares, dude? I, so, I think that was kind of the beginning of the end for Crab. Yeah. I know Proteus, Proteus, the poster this time, got mad at him for a different reason. of dissing, uh, I think it was a D-Prisoner or some shit like that. Um, internet drama. Internet drama. I think this sort of culminated in the Tyrion 2000 thread. Oh, yeah, that was the last one, wasn't it? No, it wasn't. Oh, what? No, it wasn't. That's the post that made me the mod of Let's Play, but... <laughs> that, no, I remember it's that. A, it was a setup. So, he, um... Crab also only posted ever on YouTube, and no other video host, and this is back before, like, YouTube HD came into play. Yeah, many of you won't remember, YouTube used to have a ten-minute time limit, which, uh, much to the chagrin of many people. Not, well, eleven minutes, really. Yeah, well, truly 11. 10.59. Right. And, but what was really weird is that, um, it was just before H.264 really came into play, YouTube had one of the worst quality of all the video hosts you could use. Yeah. But Crab really liked it. Let me tell you about a thing called Google Video. <laughs> Which was really worse at the end of it, but whatever. Yeah, really pretty bad. But... Yeah, it was. But this is back in the day when we didn't know what the fuck we were doing. We were yeah. posting on Vimeo and blah, blah, blah. 2006, 2007... Apparently, though, a lot of people really like this Tyrion 2000 game. I'd never heard of it. I'd still never heard of it. So, um, but he only put it on YouTube, which kind of butchered the quality people felt of this, like, shoot 'em up And everyone trolled him, myself included. Um, <laughs> but mostly, no, I thought, I, I thought what I said was really funny, because he was doing Let's Plays with this uh, female Let's Player, Madame Luna. Mm-hmm. And I just posted, like, so are you and Madame Luna boning or what? And, you know, because I'm from Jersey, and that's, like, how we say hello. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so. You know, right. But, um, so basically, uh, the thread got gassed, and Crab started another one the next day, which I felt was kind of a bad move. And so, yeah. yeah. So basically, like, Lewis God, the mod at the time, the game's mod, came in and was like, I don't really, and then one of the things he says, I don't really read Let's Play, and someone pointed out, like, yeah, I don't think any of the game's mods do, so, you know, that's how I got to be the moderator there. And the reason that um, I know it wasn't Deceased Crab's last one was because he posted a few others, and I, you know, tried to kind of keep this sort of middle ground where it's like, okay, don't just diss him because he's Deceased Crab, like, at least give him a shot kind of thing. And it just wasn't working out. And then his last one was this Dr. Livingston game, 
And oh. I, I posted a thing like, hey, just, you know, don't fuck around. Just don't diss him just because it's a deceased crab. At least try to watch it or whatever. And then Lewis God, the games mod, comes in and says, this thread sucks. Which totally undermined what I just said. But <laughs> but then Crab decided, was like, said to me, like, you know what? I think I'm just going to, like, hang out on YouTube and not post on SA. And I felt bad because I'm like, you know, but to be frank, I was like, thank you, God. Because that made my job a lot easier. And, you know, to, you know, give him a little bit of defense, he takes... Stuff in good humor, like when we kind of shit oh, on yeah. him a little bit. Like, he, he, he thought it was funny. I'm not, I'm not trying to, like, tell you this story to say, like, hey, Deceased Crab sucks and you take shit seriously. It was just sort of like... Yeah, yeah. Just my, kind of my take on what happened there and stuff, you know? I, mm-hmm. I think, basically, I think he made that mistake in around the Knit Stories thread. And um, he's probably worn it since then, and he's not a bad guy or anything like that. I just feel like that was the problem, and that's why SA sort of turned against him, mm-hmm. was kind of my feelings on that matter. And then he directed Prometheus, which is totally Yeah, then stupid. that's kind of where... That's ridiculous. You know, I just kind of left the deceased crab bandwagon. Basically. That said, I really like La Moana. Mm-hmm. Maybe not the second time. I mean... So that's part three. Is that part three? <laughs> I think that's part three. Jesus Christ. Why are we doing this again? Um, people asked us to. Should we go for part four? Uh, did you have a topic in the pocket for part four? I know I can come up with one. Okay. Um, I don't have one, so go ahead. Um, I don't have any Retsu Prey news to share. <laughs> oh, uh, that's just breaking. We recorded a Hayate game. <laughs> Um, we could talk about these long plays and how we started doing them and shit. Yeah, um, I could use a refresher on that. So, like, I just remember we spontaneously, or like, you had found Last Alert, but I don't remember how you came across it. I don't either. Well, okay, big confession about me. So you might know I I make Let's Play. (gasps) What? In addition to Let's Play. Oh, shit, really? I think you might have been part of it a couple times. Oh my god. I know. Um, but sometimes what I'll do to like find interesting games is I'll look at long plays. Because, you know, somebody's fucking playing it for me. Is that how you found Darkseed? No. Um, Darkseed was a game I played. Darkseed was my first Let's Play. Mm-hmm. And it was a game I... Uh, well, it depends well, on if you count Darkseed or that Metal Gear 2 thing I did. But um, Metal Gear start... 2 thing was like 2004? Four, five, yeah. Four? 2004. If I remember correctly. The Stone Age of Let's Play. Let me see if... Wait, I can just check right that now. That was the big bang of Let's Play. <laughs> well, that was... I mean... Where do I even begin with that? Or if you're a creationist, it was the there Adam and Eve of Let's Play. Um, August 25th, 2004. Mm. Um, yeah, well, alright, well, that's a good enough topic. So, like... Um, Does it freak you out that that was eight years ago? <laughs> I don't like to think about it. <laughs> okay. So, uh, what happened was... I was on the Something Awful forums, and uh, Let's Play was kind of this annoying thing at the time. And what happened was, like, this poster in GBS made a Let's Play of Oregon Trail. I don't know if you've heard of this, or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard that. Yeah. I never saw it, but apparently, like, she took, like, forums posters and made them part of the wagon trail and would post what happened to them, you know, in terms of, like, dysentery and all the shit that can happen to you in Oregon Trail. Yeah. For and, and whatnot. Right, and it was successful, and people tried to emulate it in JRPGs, like Final Fantasy VII six, and eight. Six, yeah. Right. And since those games, you couldn't really do a lot with them, you know, it was pretty crappy, honestly. People didn't like Let's Play. Yeah, it was more like, at the time, it was like, and then this happened, and now this happens. Skip a lot. This happened next. And it was all screenshot. There was no, like, video yeah. or anything, right? Oh, yeah, video was unheard of. So the big one I remember was this poster named Blafour who did a, a, a Let's Play of I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream, which is mm-hmm. this game based on a short story by Harlan Ellison, same company who made Darkseed. It's a game that people have asked us to uh, Retsu Prey, actually. I don't know how I'd Probably feel about it, because when Lawford did it, it seemed like a good game. Like, it was very... Um, like, like, weren't you telling me that it kind of is kind of a self-aware sort of game, and it's... It's, it's very... So it's, it's based on a short story by Harlan Ellison. It's... It takes place in the far future. There's five humans left alive. Um, and basically they're, they've programmed AI to, you know, do war for them. 
And the AI ends up becoming self-aware, and it kills all the humans on the planet, save these five people who it decides to just psychologically torture and keep artificially alive. Hmm. So it's like these five people in hell, more or less, you know? And it's a very, very, very dark game. There's, like, there's like a rape scene, and there's, like, a, well, the Holocaust is depicted. It's, like, very heavy material, you know? Mm -hmm. Sloth played it pretty straight, and it's not that funny, but, like... It was a really interesting game, and I feel like that was maybe the first, like, hey, here's the walkthrough kind of experience of Let's Play, you know? Mm -hmm. And everybody was, like, hooked to it, and everybody was F5-ing and everything. And, um, but anyway, that company was made by... That, the, the company that made that game also made Darkseed. Uh, one, one and two. And I had played Darkseed when I was younger, so when I saw the Law Wars thing of it, it reminded me of my strategy guide, too, where I'm, like, the walkthrough kind of style, and I'm like, oh, I, I did something like this. And I had wanted to only watch... better. <laughs> well, mine was easier. Mine was a little more upbeat because you can make fun of the game and shit. Like Lot not Wars... so much rape in Metal Gear Two. <laughs> that's exactly it. Yeah. Like it's that's that's like the thing about. I, I don't know that we could really let's play. Um, I have no mouth because you know that and maybe the Holocaust. I don't know. It's like all oh, awful. <laughs> no, I mean like maybe that's over. I don't know. Anyway, forget it. But. Um, the point, the point I'm getting at is though, it's, it's a very dark game. Mm. And, uh, anyway, so I did Dark Seed along with it, or I did Dark Seed after, the, after that, basically. Uh, and I was not going to do Dark Seed 2, because, uh, people asked for it, and, uh, at the time Vlafor did Harvester, which is another one people have asked us to do. Yeah. And that, that one I think is definitely doable. Um, that one, actually, I think we should maybe do a straight-up video let's play of. Harvester? Uh, yeah. Huh? One of the interesting things about Harvester is there's so much to do in it that Vlafor couldn't cover at all. And his sort of surprise at the end of the let's play was he, it was Abandonware, so he gave you a link, he gave you his copy of it. And he's like, go play for yourself and, you know, post back with, nobody did it. But, yeah, yeah Harvester's a really fucked up game. But So it's here's like, my question. Sure. Did you know at the time just how bad Dark Seed 2 was? No, I'd, I'd never played it. Or did that just kind of come out in our long play of it? No, I... Dark Seed 2 is really bad, and I almost did not let's play it at all. Mm. Um, the truth of the matter is, if you remember, it is a very boring game. Yes. It takes, like, like a long time to get to the Dark World, and by the time you get there, you just don't care anymore. Yeah, I feel like my uh, perception of it's been skewed quite a lot because of how inept the person playing the game was in the video mm -hmm. we talked over. No, that's fair. It just made it seem much, much worse, but I'm assuming, you know, we still saw the exposition and everything, which is all still pretty terrible, so... See, frankly, even if you're, like, speeding through it, quote-unquote, like, you still got the same problem, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, you're getting a clown's medicine, and you just don't give a shit. Right. You know, like, it, it's just not good... I really considered not less playing it, but what happened was, um, this was a very badly programmed game, so all the video sequences were just straight up AVIs on the disc, right. so I started just clicking through them, and, spoiler for Dark Seed 2, and, um, one of them was the mom's head exploding, mm. and I'm like, okay, well, now I have to let's play this, just to, or just, I have to at least play through it, just to see how the hell that comes about. Because that is the climax of the game, really. Yeah, it really is. For most people. I, I agree. Mean. No, absolutely. Um, yeah. It's not a scary game at all. I would actually contend... <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but I would, get, I would contend Dark Seed 1 actually can be pretty good. If you cut out... You, if you get the pre-CD version with no Mike Dawson crazy voice, it's... Uh. I mean, it's, it's very creepy music, it's very creepy visuals, and it's kind of... As stupid as it is, like, it kind of... I don't know, those old-style DOS games were kind of... They could kind of get under your... I don't know. The only game I remember similar to that was... I, I think it was called Seventh Guest? It was an NES game? No, it was not. It was a PC game. Oh, it was a PC game. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was the game where you um, walked down a hallway, there was a lady in a dress with her back to you. When, you turn, when she turned around, she was like a skeleton. Oh my god, you are the worst. The I'm game like thinking of an entirely different game. You're thinking of The Uninvited. The Uninvited, thank you. Yes, yeah. that's it. Yeah. That was kind of an unnerving game. I had rented that as a kid. And it's kind of scary for a kid to play. I agree. I think that's yeah. when we... I think we should let's play that. Sure. The Uninvited, personally. 
I do uh, need to confront my childhood demon, so I would appreciate that. In the same vein, by the way, Deceased Crab did let's play that game's predecessor, Shadowgate. Oh. <laughs> Fucking wrapping up these podcast tracks all together, huh? Man. Tell me that. Um, Part one of one. We've covered everything in this one podcast we wanted to talk about. <laughs> um, so yeah, Dark Seed 2. <sighs> Awful game. Mm-hmm. Dark Seed 1 is a pretty bad game, honestly, but I, I, it had... It, for, it was like a victim of its time. Like all adventure games sure. back then were shitty. Sure, I, I was not impressed, but then again, this was in 2011. I think that was made in 19... <laughs> what, 92, 3... How did we start on this story, by the way? What was the point of it? The resolution um, I was supposed to I think to get you had to? said, let's make a podcast. Oh, okay. And that's where it started. All right. Yeah. You want to go on for another ten minutes? Sure, that was part four. Okay, I guess. Uh, <laughs> don't worry, I'm the podcast bookkeeper here. I'm keeping up with it. You're the, the pod li- the pod, the podbarian. The podbarian, yes. Sure. You want to just go through the history of Let's Play as we the know The podstorian. Oh, didn't we already do that with the whole Oregon Trail thing? I would I would go into like I don't know I could go into Snatcher and Immortal and well, Splatterhouse. Yeah, sure, Dish about Immortal. That was the first video LP, was it not? Well, yeah, Snatcher was the one that like got popular or whatever. Mm. That was a screenshot thing you did though, right? That was well. What happened? Well, so the way this worked, and Vla- please say Snatcher in its original caps lock pronunciation. <laughs> Snatcher. Well, Vla- Vlafour ended. I had no mouth, but I must screen with a video. Which was unheard of at the time. <gasps> oh, I know. No, but it was before like YouTube was really hit big yet, you know, or anything. And I forget exactly where he hosted it, but you had to like download the MP4, and I even offered to host it off him because his original host wasn't that good. Mm. And um, you know, so uh, so this was pre Google Video, even. I mean, it was or around the that new time. Google Video was around. It was around that time. Yeah. Because at the end of Dark Seed, which came afterwards, I posted the YouTube video of Dark Seed with voice, which is what we ended up uh, wrong praying, you know, with like, the battery still works, like that old shit. Right, right. Right. Um, and Dark Seed 2 did include video, and I, I used Google Video because that didn't lead to any audio desync problems like YouTube did at the time. Yeah, had no time limit. Exactly, right. Um, so, I actually, Snatcher was a bit of a rush job. Because at the time there was a rumor of a Hideo Kojima uh, Snatcher sequel, hmm. so I'm like, "Oh shit, someone's gonna think to let's play it." So I ran and did it real quick. Um, it was all Google Video. I mean, not not all. I'm sorry. It was a screenshot let's play with like Google Video scenes. Hmm. You know, and... very cutscene heavy game. So exactly. So anyway, it was it was popular. People liked it, and I I was outside smoking a cigarette, and I was like, well, I wonder if there's any other cool games I could do after Snatcher, and one of them I got was The Immortal, which was, like, this game I loved when I was younger. You were talking to your co-workers about this while you were outside smoking? <laughs> so I, I was thinking about Let's Play a new game. <sighs> I, I, I actually did a lot to keep Let's Play from my co-workers at the time. <laughs> but, um, funny story about that. So, I did The Immortal as a screenshot Let's Play originally. And I had, like, tried to add things since Dark Seed 2. I bought, like, a gimmick account to post as, like, the Dark World Slow Beef, which was totally lame. And when I did Snatcher, a bunch of people bought gimmick accounts as characters in the game and started posting. So, like, Zorak posted as Gillian Seed. Someone made a Benson Cunningham one. Someone did a Random Hagiel one. Like, it was really weird and stuff. So for the Immortal, I figured my special thing was I would do the what ended up being a video Let's Play of it where I would, like, talk over video gameplay of it. And people ended up liking that better, so I just turned it into a video Let's Play. This was Snatcher? No, The Immortal. Oh, The Immortal. Okay. Yeah, well, you're not paying attention to my boring, droning stories. Oh, it's, it's riveting. I'm just... I, I know. All these video games. Excuse me, I'm sorry. This is part five of our long pl- uh, our long cast. <laughs> That's what I'm going to call it, a long cast. Let's talk. Let's talk. Um, at any rate, um... Uh, video Let's Play kind of hit big at... Well, no, it didn't after that. I, I just, <laughs> it struck gold, my friend. <laughs> no, it was when Super Metroid came out, actually. That's the one that really kind of did it. That's the one I remember. Yeah. Where that, I kind of started noticing it. This guy, like, Dr. Doji Swab, did a screenshot Let's Play of Super Metroid and then quit six videos in. And it had, like, a two-bar rating, and I just had this... I don't know why I did it, but I'm like, you know what? I'm going to get this up to a four-bar, and I just start contributing videos... 
<laughs> and then I just started making, I just made my own thread. And that's the one that people, I guess, took notice of Video Let's Play, and they started posting their own. And yeah, like, it was the first kind of, like, mainstream game that was in that format that kind of caught people's attention. That's, I was that's where you started activating people's nostalgia, I think. I think so. And what's funny is that I was working for MTV Networks at the time, and uh, I was kind of trying to sell it, because, like, people started to do, like, Kefka Floyd did Bionic Commando, and then Psychedelic Eyeball did Prince of Persia, which was kind of a big one. Mm-hmm. And I actually showed, like, this producer from Comedy Central, like, Psychedelic Eyeball playing, like, Prince of Persia. <laughs> and he was that. laughing. Yeah, we were at a party. It was, like, a low-key party, not, like, a off-the-hook party, you know? But I'm Tom like, Cruise what? stopped by. I was like, hey, what's this? <laughs> <laughs> yes, basically. Yeah. And um, he loved it, so he did it. He did Top Gun. But <laughs> the movie. <laughs> wow, Let's Play's pretty old. <laughs> <laughs> Time's all over the place. It's in the late eighties, wow. Basically, more or less. Mm. But um, I I don't know. I guess that's a, it. Didn't really go anywhere from there. Um, but like Proton John and Psychedel or and uh, to see's crab went to YouTube, which kind of spread it there. And I guess that's about where it really kind of I don't know taught yeah. fire. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think it's pretty. I don't know. I I I, I kind of feel like it, it came more about like the gamer than the game, in a way, and that's what kind of annoys me about it now. Yeah, around the time when the whole YouTube thing hit, it was well, it was more people playing games that other like everyone had played before. That's kind of how like your Mario stuff started, and it's like it's not something that you show to people so much as like, hey, I'm going to add myself to this and make that the appeal of watching this. Well, the only thing about it too is like. Um, and I feel like even though something awful fell into that trap, at least it was a message board where people could tell you, like, it was bad or stupid. There was you, some sense of quality control there, which is kind of how the whole forum community system works. Right. And, but I mean, that's very lost on YouTube because of the way that community is set up. Well, it's decentralized. Exactly. You know, yeah. so someone can tell you you suck on YouTube, but who gives a shit? Like, yeah, there's I mean, no way... like, you are in... Con- you're, like, your administrator of your own community, mm-hmm. so, if, you know don't like someone who disagrees with what you're doing, you just block them and allow only the good stuff to be filtered in. It's more of a series of islands than a citadel, you know? I mean, sometimes I worry, too, that something awful kind of goes too far in the other direction, but, like, you kind of do at least need someone telling you, you know, this is not the right thing to do. And you can see it happen, over the back of the day, at least, like, a lot with YouTube, like, with I Want to Be the Guy videos over and over again. Everywhere, yeah. And there were even, like, these unwritten rules where you had to include all your deaths, and you had to play on the hardest difficulty, even if you weren't good at the game. Mm. And, and like, watching someone die over and over at a video game is funny for maybe the first five minutes, but it gets old pretty quick. Mm. So. Yeah, especially when that's the crux of your entire <laughs> let's play. Right. <laughs> you have, like, three videos that are all, like, no progress, no progress, no You're progress. like, oh, I have to beat this game. Well, <laughs> uh... I'm not going to act like S.A., though, had it all right, because S.A., I mean, Retro Prey was born from a video on S.A., mm-hmm. really. It was, like, Cynics and I making fun of that guy who playing Super Mario Brothers 3. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Retro Prey was started without me. <laughs> Would you like to talk about how you got into Let's Play? And it used like... to suck. Uh, oh, sorry. Um... <laughs> I've talked a lot about uh, myself, and so why don't you... Why don't you pick up this podcast, Brave? Sure. Pull we'll your fucking piggyback cast off this riveting conversation. <laughs> Let me tell you about my beginnings of recording myself playing video games for anonymous strangers. I can bullshit for fifty minutes. I'm a podcast. Let's see. How did I get started? Um, well, I first started noticing it when it was about 2006. I I'd, I would, had missed the whole Dark Sea shit. You know, no offense. <laughs> um, I started noticing it when the more mainstream games popped up. So the first one I remember was a screenshot let's play of Final Fantasy VI. And oh, that was that's... a game I had played, you know, to death in childhood. I loved that game. And so, you know, just seeing it from this whole fresh perspective kind of got me watching it and kind of following along with it. Like, hey, remember that thing that happened? Oh, yeah, the world got blown, you know, all that shit. Uh-huh. And it was cool. So, you know, followed along with that. I didn't really post much, just kind of watched it. Then, I think it was around... The next one I remember is your Super Metroid thread, where I started... I think I started posting kind of around the time. most boring so fucking story. It. Yeah, no, I'm yeah, sorry, what so you exciting. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Let me tell you about my history as a passive observer of what other people do. 
I'm sorry. Like I, well, this is kind of how like our budding friendship began. Because oh yeah, I, no, yeah. I, I think I sent you like a PM about something map related and super. You sent me a map. You were like, "Hey, I like the I like the thread. Here's um, here's uh, five missiles. They're here. <laughs> you know, something something like that." Well, it was funny because like I, I didn't. I mean, obviously, I didn't know you from Adam at the time, and then uh, <laughs> no pun intended. Um, oh. No, 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 but, like, it was weird, because, like, a bunch of people sent me, like, little hints and shit like that, and then after we'd met and everything, like, and started doing videos, I looked back at my old PMs for some reason, I'm like, holy shit, Diabetes sent me a map, what an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and no, you man. totally ignored it. Oh, anyway, I'm sorry, though, yeah, so... But, yeah, that had happened, and then uh, it was after that that the whole co-commentator thing started going, so you'd had, you know, your whole Scarboy thing... Mm -hmm. I think it was Kefka Floyd who did, like, a Mega Man XLP, and this was That's... the first time there was, like, user participation became a thing. And so he had had, like, kind of rotating guests, which, you know, you had adopted in your whole Metroid Prime thing. Mm -hmm. And so that was how I had uh, my first my first gig. I'm just going to raise my finger there, though. I mean, I, okay. we did have rotating guests, in, or we're supposed to in Super Metroid, mm -hmm. but a lot of people couldn't get the Skype thing going. But yeah, to be, to well, be... it was complicated technology at first. Like, there wasn't, like, streaming wasn't really a thing back then. There That's was, right, uh, yeah. The whole, uh, what was it called, Kylera server? Kylera Netplay, yeah. Kylera Netplay, yeah. So, you, like, both people had to run ZS and ES at the same time and have the ROM of the game, and, like, you hosted the server, the other person would just, like, see you playing live from there. Right, and it would, like, try to stream the controller inputs, and people could get desynced That's and start right, seeing yeah. different things on their computers. So you would see, back in the day, you would see this thing where when people had to load a state when playing that game or some particularly hard game, it would have to, like, load the state on the other person's end as well, so it would take, like, five seconds to load that, every single state. Well, that was ZSNES that did the state thing. You couldn't do load states with Kylera. That's right, yeah. That's right. That's right. It used to be tough, kids. <laughs> you don't have the technology back in the day. Taking your Let's Plays for granted now. I know, it's ridiculous. These jerks. It, it's so easy now. So, um, so after that, um, like, the first thing I'd, like... Like, I'd never gotten into playing a game myself. I'd just kind of, like, been in the background talking with other people who were playing games. Much like I still do. Right, right, right. And then that's when, uh, if anyone remembers Zomadoc, he started this Let's Play of a ROM hack of Legend of Zelda called Parallel Worlds. I don't remember that. Yeah, so it was these two guys named uh, Euclid cares. and Seth, who, uh, this was the, like, the first ROM hack, or not, maybe not the first ROM hack, but kind of one of the it, first, like, it depends complete, on, complete overhaul ROM hacks. It depends on how you define ROM hack, because some people, like, ROM hack, like, Japanese video games, just put them into English, but then, like, mm -hmm. there's the whole ROM hack thing where they would take, like, already made American games and just make them hard, or... But, you know, like, games we saw make them harder and things like that. And that was, like, Parallel yeah. World-style ROM hack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it was Parallel just... Worlds, which led to your Kaizos and et cetera, et cetera. Right. But I think Parallel Worlds was the first thing on SA that was like that, so it was kind of a novel concept that people got into. And I don't really remember how I got into that with Zomadoc in the first place, or how we kind of got into our buddy-buddy thing. But, um, you know, I hung around for most of that thread that happened. Then after that, I was like, you know, I think I could contribute something to this, and then... That's and you were totally I, wrong. I was totally wrong. I had no idea what I was doing. And uh, so I'd played a, a Battletoads game, not the not the Battletoads game, quote-unquote, but one I had played as a child growing up very, uh, very thoroughly, the Super Nintendo Battletoads, and that was the first one I did by myself. Then that was what the whole, hey, I'll let's play a hard game, but do it in a skilled way... And so that appealed to some people for whatever reason, and so that's how I kind of got into doing my own thing a little bit. I remember you were doing Lurk... Didn't you, like, let's play with Lurk Dog, too, back in the day? <laughs> Lurk Dog, um... God, I miss that guy. Me too. I don't... How would you, like, describe his style? I don't know. He would just get, <laughs> he would just get really high and play video games. Yeah, like, there was... An, like, like, you know, Let's Play had had this whole kind of quality standard thing behind it, but Lurk Dog was able to throw that out the window and still be awesome. No, yeah, he totally eschewed that, but he was funny enough to make it work. Exactly, exactly. Well, that's, that's the thing that about SA, and in general, when it comes to Let's Play, it's like, you, you can, like, throw out the rules if you're, like, funny enough. It's just mm -hmm. that the problem is, like, you know... Like, Taxidermist Pace had done that. Yeah, Exactly. Him and Lollipop Mambo were very funny, and, like, the whole yeah. bubble bobble thing is a terrible idea for a Let's Play, but they were just funny enough, and it just worked well enough that it worked. Mm -hmm. I miss Blue Lander, too. She was really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. 
in that what, uh, Lyle and Cube Sector game. I remember watching that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, video Let's Play kind of kind of blew up all over the place with people finding their own different, unique takes on games, kind of mm-hmm. injecting their personality into you know people's personalities are different. So it kind of makes Let's Play appealing in different ways, and so that's kind of where it started taking off more. And once people kind of figured out how to do it, uh, you know, it allowed for that kind of uh, creativity. Well, that's the whole problem, too, though, is once it got mainstream, just everybody just started doing it and doing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, it's a double-edged sword, to be sure. So, you know, some people can do it in a good way, but then then these whole spin-off Let's Play forums happened at some point. I really want to know of the two, right? I mean, there was mm-hmm. letsplayforum.com, and there was, like, one other, like, really, really obscure one. It was the letsplayforum.com that kind of inspired Red Supreme, wasn't it? It was, it was. Yeah. But I think that's another story for another time. For another podcast, perhaps. We're closing in on an hour right now. I think so. And we've left people in suspense already, so... <laughs> I agree. I think we maybe... Want to, we want you to listen to episode two. Is this, how does this work now? Does this 15-minute one become, like, some <laughs> magic one? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I think we had some kind of catchy song on the beginning and end of this hour-long recording and just vomited on <laughs> iTunes. Well, is that how is that how podcasting works? I, as far as I know, I listen to a number of podcasts, but it sounds good to me. What should we name? Yeah, what should we name? Uh, what should name we name episode? this podcast? Is it Retsu Talk? Is that or uh, Ret- Rets Talk? Retsu Talk? <laughs> but you Retscast. you beat us to the punchline. <laughs> Beef. It's what's for podcast. Okay. Uh, well, no. Hmm. Please buy our merchandise. No. <laughs> uh, this is a completely unfunny... Po- do you think this is a completely unfunny podcast, or do you think this is a good start to it? Um, I'm, I'm not going to go back and listen to it. <laughs> Me neither. But... We'll just throw it up there, and if people want to listen, hey, that's life. Throw it up there, whatever. People tune out. It'll be a horrible idea, and we'll make uh, nothing from it. Yeah, basically. Mm-hmm. That's how podcasting works. Well, that way we'll overexpose ourselves and flood the market with... You and I talking about bullshit. Mm-hmm. I don't even remember where we left off with this story. Was it just that, like, and that's how we started Let's Play, the end. We left off on the cliffhanger of Let's Play Forum.org or com inspired Retsu Prey. Find out how next time on episode two of the Rets cast, Retsu Talk. Rets something. Retsu. Pa- por- Ret- Which is uh, leave a big- comment, tell us what to name our podcast. Yeah, actually, that's a good idea. Uh, rate us in iTunes? Is that. How the thing works? I have no idea. I don't listen to podcasts. Well, get on it. Here, have a... Don't you? Don't you commute? Don't you have a long period of time where you do nothing every morning and afternoon? I play iPhone games. Well, I used to, I used to play iPhone games, but well, I'm in school now, so I write papers. But oh, hey, save that for episode two or, or <laughs> I, se- seven. I would say put that one in the backpack burner. I can't wait to episode seventeen where we're just sitting in silence. Like, um, I like taffy. How about you? Not really. <laughs> we'll talk about draw something and how you think my drawing sucks because it does. No, you, it, it, I wish I'd taken screencast. That was screencast <laughs> screenshots because that was screencast. Ridiculous. Screencast. The draw something screencast. I wish we could on explain iTunes. all the content when we talk. We can talk about. Uh, Let's just make all our interactions public. That's yeah, what I'm we should. At. Yeah, <laughs> like if you ever talk to me, I'll be like, save it for the podcast. <laughs> If you're like, diabetes, I have a big problem I need to talk to you about. Dude, save it for the podcast. Okay? <laughs> we talk on AIM at work. Yeah. Basically. Save it for I the think, podcast. I think my fiance is going to leave. Save it! <laughs> it's going to... It's going to... Yeah, exactly. Well, love that for the text cast. The text cast. Everything we... we I am each other at work. Basically. Every time you IM me, uh, hey, are you streaming this, dude? <laughs> I, think I, I think I have a good subject to talk about. Like, you're never going to believe what happened to me today. We'll talk about it in the podcast. <laughs> This is going to totally stunt our friendship. We're never going to have any conversation out of this. <laughs> Look, if Audacity is not recording, I don't really want to talk to you. Hey, hey, hey. Oh. What, what do you mean you have cancer? We'll talk about that in the podcast. <laughs> Wait, don't cry now. Wait till the podcast. You want me to review your wedding vows? Can't we do that on the podcast? <laughs> Honey, we can't get married unless it's being streamed. Honey, if we're going to conceive our child, I want it to be on the podcast. <laughs> All right, I think that's a good six episodes. Let's charge these motherfuckers like ten bucks a piece. <laughs> exactly. Take tons of money and rent. Ten dollar premium episodes. <laughs> Rent's tire. Rent's tire. All right.
Ritz Tire the Ritz Cast. All right, sounds good. We'll see you next time. See you next time, Bye bye.